Hello, I'm a nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. It's not always easy being a critic. Yeah, it is. But sometimes it can be annoying. And when I say that, I don't mean like watching a horrible, horrible movie. No, no, no. I mean watching an incredibly boring movie. And I mean boring. Case in point, let's take a look at Warriors of Virtue. If I told you this was about a little boy who takes a journey to a fantasy world where kangaroos know martial arts, you'd say, that sounds like shit. But at least it would keep my attention, right? Wrong. This movie is beyond unentertaining. It's just a pain to sit through. I'd rather watch paint dry while keeping an eye on grass growing while watching a TV show with Mr. T, Hulk Hogan, and Bruce Campbell filing their taxes. It is that boring. So, what makes this an unbelievable doll fest? Well, pull up a pillow and let's find out. So it starts out with a very vague backstory about how the age of warrior seems to be fading in a time of crisis. Is there someone with the courage to step forward? But I fear for him, as I fear for us. Okay, this doesn't seem too bad. An action-packed adventure that promises lots of excitement. Um... Warriors of Virtue! Thrilling suspense, mind-boggling fantasy, and cozy confines of middle-class suburbia. So we come across a kid named Ryan, reading probably the worst drawn comic book in the history of comic books. I guess all the heroes are mute, too, because there isn't one single word bubble on any of those pages. Jeez, what will Linkara say? I'd say it's an insult to comic readers everywhere! Now let me tell you why! I So we go from reading comics on the john to the sizzling of shrimp in a stir-fry. <laughs> Right, even Iron Chef doesn't show off this much, guy. Just friggin' relax. Okay, do you really need to jump kick the faucet? I mean, is it absolutely necessary? Where's Chef Ramsay when you need him? Oh. You don't get So I guess Ryan is friends with the chef. I don't really know how that happens, but okay. As the chef tells him about the mystical brouhaha about being a master of something or let go of your limitations, Ryan. Imagine a world beyond anything you've ever seen. Ah, uh, look, I just ordered the Kung Pao chicken. Can you get it for me already? A world defended by great warriors. Just, I'm kinda hungry. No guns, no lasers, no morphing. Probably getting cold. They use the forces of nature as their weapons. You're not getting a dip. <laughs> okay, now we're in a sports movie! What the hell's going on here? Can you pick a friggin' scenario? <laughs> So he's a water boy on a football team because he has a limp leg that doesn't allow him to play. But that doesn't stop him from giving some helpful advice. If you fake to Toby and then bootleg left, you have a clear path to the end zone. Alright. <laughs> 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 I like it when the water hit his foot. <laughs> but it turns out the football player takes his advice and wins the game. <laughs> We officially entered into a different movie. I don't know if they got a new director or if a few pages of Rudy accidentally got mixed into the script, but this isn't the same film we started out on. So after that, ending to another film, Ryan points out how he helped the football player. So the tough guy tries to find a sneaky way to return the favor. You want to hang out with us tonight? Yeah, sure. Cool. We'll be around the Orna Tunnel about 8 o'clock. Great, we'll be there. All right. It's a trap! So it goes back to every kid's favorite hotspot, the Chinese kitchen, where he gets in trouble misunderstanding what one of the chefs is saying. Okay, this guy should be on special forces or something. What the hell is he doing in a damn kitchen? What's this? It's a cocoon. I was on my way home from school. Start lying on the ground. 
just sitting there. Yeah, um, don't you have some Happy Meals to Kung Fu or something? But then all of a sudden, down he came, into the ground. Whoa! The yeah. kitchen is on fire! Stop telling that kid the stupid story and help us! I was like you once. Never felt I was good enough. Always wanted to be like someone else. This is Tao. You mean Dao? The word that's spelled like Tao but pronounced like Dao except by people that know absolutely nothing about Chinese? Idiot! So they meet at the location the football player was talking about as they go into a tunnel to play some sort of dare. I bet they're gonna cross it. By the way, who just randomly waves their flashlights like that? So they get to this big sewer where I guess they partake in this sort of rite of passage or something. The kid needs to cross a beam and get to the other side to spray paint something on the wall. You're moving like a baby! Why don't you just get down and crawl? Come on! <laughs> what are you? Physically disabled or something? This is probably a bad idea. Come on! Huh? Uh-oh. I hear a plot device. <laughs> oh no, I killed a ten-year-old. They're totally gonna drop me from the team for this. So for some reason, he wakes up in Yoda's bathroom, where it seems some mythical sewer magically transported him to another world. Oh uh, no, he's in Fern Gully! Ah! So he looks around the whimsical world when he suddenly comes across a very interesting looking character. Excuse me, can you tell me how to get to the set of Tank Girl? Ah! Well, I didn't think it was that bad of a movie. So while screaming at things and running away, he notices something very interesting. My leg... works. It works! Yes! <laughs> yay! Yay! Oh, I think I just broke it again! Son of a bitch! Blue 42! Set! Fight! Uh, yeah, did you just forget you were flushed down the toilet into a supernatural world? Just, just thought I'd remind you. The so he's attacked by that little guy from Twin Peaks, but then is suddenly saved by... Uh, roller Girl? We're not safe here. Come on. Meanwhile, on the set of Dune, we see our villain named Komodo. I brought you this. It's from a boy. He's a newcomer. Newcomer? The monarch is not pleased. General Grillo, I ask you this. What's the point of power if you don't abuse people? I'm trying to do every Johnny Depp performance I've ever seen. My lord, it's the symbol of Tau. Oh, really? The symbol of Tau? So Ryan and his new friend talk about where he is. Who are you? Where am I? I'm Alicia. You're in Tau. Dow, God damn it! He said if it was ever returned to Tao, Dow. it could change everything. When he came to Tao, he Dow. said You know what? Homies. It's your fictional bullshit. Just call it whatever the hell you want. So they arrive at their town, which kind of looks like the Narnians if they had landscaping by the Ewoks, as their leader comes forward to give them some news. We cannot let our fears defeat us. Master Chung, we have hope. A newcomer has arrived. It's too small to be a newcomer! Houston, we have a problem. Alicia said you have brought the manuscript. It is important, newcomer. The name is Ryan Jeffers. Bitch! Show me the words of virtue, please. So Master Chung shows him the Teenage Mutant Ninja marsupials as he describes their character traits that will not really be examined outside of the fact that he just listened. This is lie. Virtue of order. The stability of wood. He is also an alcoholic. Chi. Virtue of high wisdom. Often playful. And closet homosexual. Shun. The virtue of loyalty. In her spare time, she writes for Business Week magazine. It pays little, but the press is great. Ye, virtue of righteousness. He used to open for Jimi Hendrix. Tough guy to work with, I hear, but I don't know. I wasn't there. So while admiring these Joel Camel Easter bunnies, Chung asks Ryan the important question. 
He is a newcomer, and he has brought something important to us. Now, Ryan Jeffers, may we see the manuscript? Well, wait a minute. Why did you wait until night to ask him that question? It was right there. You started to bring it up. I mean, what the hell happened in between those scenes? And he has brought something important to us. Oh, dance time. Jan knows where it is. If the newcomer was saved at the river, it would have been Jan. Dr. Claw is right. It was probably Jan. So we get a scene of Elisa and Ryan chatting. What are you thinking about? Home. I wonder if my mom and dad are worried about me. I wish I'd known my mother and father. Sucks. They died just <sighs> after my brother and I were born. Master Chung looked after us. So one boring backstory later, she takes him to some old memorial where all these statues stand. But after the war in Tao started... Isn't this just riveting? All this was built in honor of the Ruse. During the old order, they were revered by everyone. But after the war in Tao started... Why'd Yun leave everyone? He killed someone in a battle. So what? It was a battle. People die. It was a life! Whoa! Fucking psycho. Someday you'll understand. Understand what? You remind me of my brother. He's always... Getting kidnapped? Oh, wait a minute. Ryan? So the bad guys tried to kidnap Ryan when they were approached by Yun, the warrior of virtue who broke his vow by killing someone. So he doesn't fight anymore. <laughs> Yes, he doesn't fight anymore! All these flips, kicks, and punches he's throwing right now? Yeah, he doesn't do any of that. It's a shame, because it looks like he's really good at it. But nope, he broke his vow and would never just turn his back in a millisecond because his honor means too much to him. By the way, what's with the blurry vision? Is the secret to outwitting your opponent cutting frames? I will destroy you along with the other Power Rangers! <laughs> So Young, who swore he would never fight again, is now fighting again, as the other mutilated Ron Perlmans welcome him back. Thank you, Ryan! Lose it! My lord. Wait, 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 wait. You can't just pass over that scene. I mean, what, what the hell was that? Is that like a Tarzan alarm clock? Is it a crowing rooster whose balls are getting crushed? What movie? What? So after that, we get another scene with King Fapir. But if the manuscript can harm us, why don't we just destroy it? It cannot be destroyed. You can be destroyed. Your armies can be destroyed. But it cannot be destroyed. I have no idea what I'm doing. Direction! Someone give me direction! Do, uh... Does purple suit me? Very much, my lord. Then you are dismissed. I have no idea why we're following you, sir. So after that, we get another scene of our heroes just sitting down and talking. God, isn't this magical. And I made a pledge to protect these people. We can't leave them defenseless. I let the men who fall into the Moto's hands. I made a pledge to Master Chubb. Oh, and just to make the scene even cheaper, they run the footage of Elisa walking backwards. Really? You couldn't just remember to tell the actress to turn around and walk down the stairs? You had to shoot it in reverse? Reversing the film is one of the cheapest moves you can do, guys. Really, really cheap. Meanwhile, at the home of the Honey Nut Cheerios Bee, we see that Alicia is a traitor who's planning to betray her fellow friends. Your guilt is obscene. It was a life! I guess no one can say that without screaming! So after playing Duck Duck Goose here, we return back to Ryan, who starts talking to the mini-me version of Andy Circus, who says he has the manuscript. Show it to me. <laughs> Crazy. It's hid. Hid where no one's gonna find it but me. But I'll take you there. It's a trap! The manuscript's not theirs. That's yours. Has anyone what, noticed how incredibly boring, boring, boring this is? is? Huh? You wanna stay here forever? Bo Never see your family? No, look, I can't believe that. They knew me here. I love you! Oh, and he's 
captured again. Gee, I sure hope there's someone to rescue him, making this moment entirely pointless. And the boredom comes full circle. Komodo's lies have blinded your vision. You know, I don't think that blurry vision is going to make two people talking seem more exciting. It, it's still boring. So we cut to the warriors as they plan to sneak into Komodo's palace to get the book back. <laughs> yeah, it's too easy. It's a trap! Lisa, what are you doing here? Oh, are you really that surprised, Yan? Shaw, like it was alive. <laughs> Thank you for hanging around. Yes, I just said that line. We at the World of Tao have no cinematic shame. You come uninvited into my lair, animals that you are, and I'll enjoy your life spring for dessert. No! Yes! Now allow me to continue shouting at random! So he tries to drop them in a mechanical slicer and dicer, but they manage to escape. So you think this would mean the action is on, right? No! We still have more scenes of Pop Tao philosophy. What matters is not what you gain there, but in your heart. You know what? Screw it. I'm just gonna see how the bears are doing. I want it to be strong, like it is now. Do you consider the warriors of virtue strong? Those like Komodo use negative Kong to kill and Duh, kill. Damn those bears! But Komodo finally arrives to turn up the heat. <laughs> what is this guy's problem? Is he just hyped up on ecstasy? <laughs> Why are you even intimidated by him? The guy's hilarious. It's like he gets sillier and sillier as the movie goes on. <laughs> <laughs> So he kills Master Chung as the rest of the village is under attack. Ryan is kidnapped AGAIN and is taken to the Lava Lamp Palace. Ryan, I wanted to tell you. You're on his side. You're a traitor. No, listen to me, Ryan. Let me explain. It was a life! That's all I got. Please, listen. Ah! Ah! Oh my god. Looking for me? This guy is too much. He's gonna make me pee. I know your sorrow. I know your loneliness. Look at me! Look at me! I'm off my bipolar depression pills. <laughs> oh. I am proud to be your destiny. No one will ever laugh at you again, I promise you that. Uh, yeah, if this guy is telling you he can make nobody laugh at you, I wouldn't trust him. Read me the book. What does it say? And then, in one of the oddest moments, and trust me, that's saying a lot, Ryan says one of the most bizarre things in a kid's movie. Shit happens. Shit. Happens. Shit happens. Shit. Dude, guys, what's with the potty mouth? Like, three more of those and you get a PG-13. You can't read the book, can you? Can you? So Ryan gets away, Lysia is killed, and Komodo keeps mugging. I want him alive! <laughs> I love this guy. Why doesn't he have his own Saturday morning cartoon show? So Ryan escapes an entire army of soldiers as Komodo follows him to the captured village. So he inspires the rest of the fish-lipped donkeys to whip out their stale macaroni and cheese swords and battle Komodo for the final time. You've come uninvited into our light spring, Komodo. This is our home. <laughs> Warriors! Come out and play! <laughs> Alright, it's official. This guy is one of the missing Looney Tunes. But it turns out Komodo has a surprise! <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. There's not enough Ritalin in the world to handle five of you. Jesus, it's like Mortal Kombat mixed with a petting zoo. How is this supposed to be taken seriously? And just to make it even more annoying, the whole entire climax is shot in that damn blurry vision. I am dead serious. We finally get some good action, and we can't make any of it out. 
It's like watching Crouching Tiger hit Dragon while you're doing this. What's the point? While the kid starts to sum up my reaction to the movie, he finally figures out how to read the book and defeat Komodo. It turns out the warriors have to combine their magic medallions together. The medallions! One! Fire! One! Nine! Combined, I am Captain Planet! the beam and instead goes home. Good god, I've never been more relieved to see boring suburbia. So Ryan goes home, kisses his mother goodnight, and then takes another look at... the cocoon from earlier. Huh, I guess they forgot to write this into the story. Hey, bro. Do you want to hear about Tao? Huh? You mean Tao, you dumb shirt? So that's Warriors of Boring. I mean virtue. And I have to admit, for a movie about... Martial arts kangaroos that battle an over-actor in black mascara? I'm pretty underwhelmed. It's just boring in every comprehension of the word. The kangaroos have no character, the kid is not interesting, the philosophy is phoned in, the world is unimaginative. Only thing I kind of like in this movie is that weirdo villain. And that's just because he's so over-the-top bad. Now, to be fair, this guy has done a lot of good serious work, like in Braveheart, Titus, and so forth. So I really credit this more to bad directing. But hey, at least it was entertaining, which is more than I can say for the rest of this stupid film. My advice if you really want to see this film, just watch Kangaroo Jack and Enter the Dragon both at the same time while doing this. <laughs> that at least would be more entertaining. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it, so you don't have to.